Bring in Constantine Kissin. Constantine, you've been tweeting away about this the last three days. Fascinating, actually, to get your take on this. How are you seeing things as we... Well, we're watching Vladimir Putin about to make some address. We have no idea what he's going to say, but what's your take on it? Well, some very good points have been made so far. The one thing I would add is I think uh, people haven't emphasized enough the fact that anybody who's going to attempt to replace Vladimir Putin is likely to be more nationalistic and more hardline than the, uh, him at the moment. As you know, over the last quarter of a century, Vladimir Putin has removed everybody who's attempted to challenge him uh, from a more liberal or more democratic position. One of those men is sitting to your left, um, Gary Kasparov, of course. And uh, so what I think people forgot in the West is there's no Nick Clegg waiting in the wings to take over. This is a very serious situation. This is a nuclear nation uh, with the potential for civil war. So I wouldn't get too excited about it, even though, of course, we would all want to see uh, Russia less powerful in its uh, terrible invasion of Ukraine. So I think that's one of the things to add, and the thing that is happening right now on our screens is Vladimir Putin giving a statement. I imagine we will see him attempting to reassert authority because what he, we have seen over the last many days is that his authority is certainly in question. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, Gary, you've been shaking your head there, so I'll come... It's absolute nonsense. I mean, it's, it's total misunderstanding of the nature of any dictatorship. After 23 years, Putin is a spine of the system. You cannot take spine away and put someone in, in the place. Whoever comes after Putin will start negotiating with Americans, with Ukrainians. There's no, no doubt about it. It's that's what happened after Stalin's death. So you cannot have another dictator replacing Putin because he's the center of the decision-making process. And now it seems that he's no longer Kapada Tutikapi. He's not the final referee in all, all these negotiations between various groups. So that's why it's like, you know, saying, oh, Stauffenberg also brought some questionable people with him, and after Hitler, we could have somebody worse. No, absolutely not. But if you take your mafia analogy, uh, for argument's sake, in the mafia, if the head boss got taken out, they would replace him with often somebody even worse. It takes time. Before you before have somebody else, they have to negotiate. It's more like a politburo, which mm. always better because they have to negotiate. Well, what do you really think in your bones is going to happen here, Gary? No, oh, I think it's, 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 it's this growing opposition to, Putin's, to Putin because he's losing the war. There's a huge commercial interest that is not interested in con to, con to continue unwinnable war. They know this war cannot be won. And again, what will be the outcome of this fight? I don't know. But I don't think Putin will stay for too long because if Russian history is any guy, the bad wars always led to the change of the regime. Ambassador, what does victory look like here? Is there any potential, as some people have called, for Ukraine to cede any of the territory that the Russians have taken? Or is your position still implacable? You do not give them an inch. That is a position that we are not going to give an inch to anybody, and Russia is the first. And second, I'd like to say... But what about Crimea, for example, which was Crimea taken years well. ago? Crimea as well. You'd like to see that... I'd like myself to see it. That's true. Yeah. And by the way, we already started to liberate some of the places which were under occupation since 2014, mm. not just recently acquired lands. So that, that's, that's what we are already doing. So do you feel total victory is now very achievable? In fact, potentially a lot more achievable than it looked last week. Much better now. That's true. This jar with the with the spiders in it, you know, who will get out of it will be wounded and will be weakened. I totally agree. And if you want to uh, talking about the analogy, historical analogies, if you remember when Gorbachev got back after the coup, it only took four months until the whole system collapsed afterward. We've got this, some some uh, quotes now from Putin tonight, General Dunnett. I'll bring this to you. The organizers of this rebellion, he says, cannot but understand that they will be brought to justice. Everyone understands this. That is criminality that is aimed at weakening the country. From outside, we are threatened. However, the organizers of this rebellion have betrayed those people who were bribed into this organization. So he's saying, apparently, also that society has consolidated. There's not much evidence of that. But he's, he's suggesting from that, unless I'm misreading it, that the Wagner group have betrayed Russia and they have to be dealt with. But there's no sign from the Wagner group that they're fearing that's going to happen. Well, he said that on Saturday morning, that these people were brought to justice. <laughs> didn't do anything. By Saturday evening, he said that they would um, be allowed to go their way. So uh, he's now reverting to his first speech. Um, what, what do you believe? What do you understand? I mean, I think um, uh, he's lashing out. I think he's showing further signs of weakness by holding completely differing points of view. Is he done, Putin, do you think? I think he's done. And go back to what I said before, I think when the Ukrainian army's counterattack uh, really gets going, then I think he will be completely done. And I think the big point on the battlefield to remember is that 
if they do manage, if the Ukrainians manage to break in and break through, they haven't got to defeat the Russian army everywhere. They've just got to make the average Russian soldier think he's lost. And when an army thinks it's lost, it's lost. And that's what they've got to try and achieve. And they can do that. Some more quotes here. Constantine, I'll bring you in here. A Putin, most of Wagner are also patriots. He closed his speech by saying President Lukashenko, obviously the Belarusian president, should be thanked for his role in this to achieve a peaceful resolution. It's a patriotic duty of everyone that has saved us. Thank you. So some kind of mixed messaging, although I guess what he's uh, trying to say tonight is that the organisers are the culpable ones. Uh, what does that mean, though? <laughs> What's he going to do? Well, as I said, uh, as I predicted, he was going to attempt to reassert authority. But on the other hand, he doesn't want to make enemies of 25,000 of his most capable soldiers uh, who are quite loyal to Evgeny Prigozhin, as far as we know. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think there was a misunderstanding about the previous point that I made. I wasn't suggesting that uh, uh, a coup would make Putin stronger. What I was saying was that a lot of the resistance to, uh, to the regime at the moment isn't actually focused on Vladimir Putin. A lot of the criticism is of his defense minister, Shoigu and the head of the armed forces, Gerasimov. And that, I think, is where this has all come from. This conflict has been brewing for many months now with a war of words between Prigozhin and the Ministry of Defense. And so what I, I was saying, and I think this is important to say, the liberal democratic voices like Gary uh, have been forced out of Russia. And so much of the resistance to Vladimir Putin isn't people who want uh, democracy and stability. It's people who feel that the war is going badly, as he says, and they want someone to come in and take charge. So uh, we, it remains to be seen how this one actually plays out. Yeah, apparently, I'm just reading some reports on Twitter here that apparently he said the uprising was doomed to fail and his organisers, even though they lost their sense of right and wrong, couldn't have failed to realise that. He also seems to say that Ukraine was involved somehow and calls the revolt revenge for their failed counter-offensive. He then ranted about Wagner's treason a bit more and then it cut out. He didn't actually announce anything, uh, wow. says someone on Twitter here. Uh, Gary, what do you make of that? Mad rantings? Yes, it's just, I think he lost control and probably feels that it's, it's, uh, uh, he can keep talking, but nothing is happening. And uh, what you just said now just uh, doesn't make any sense. No, none of it makes no, sense. No. Do you think he'll still be in charge in a month's time? Months, maybe. Uh, definitely not within a year, probably, you know, three to six months. Ambassador, what do you think? It will be bloody, it will be dirty, but he's going down. General? And there might be a churn. Someone might replace him, and then someone might replace that person. I think the second replacement could be more favourable to the West. And just a final point, General. What message does all this send to China, who may have been considering attacking Taiwan? Is this a marker in the sand that if you do this kind of thing as a dictatorship, that actually it can backfire pretty, pretty horrendously? The Chinese should think very carefully about taking on the world over Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Actually, the Chinese are a patient people. Just give it time. Um, they would be most unwise to take any lessons out of this. If there is a lesson, actually, it's a coup such as, such as Putin tried to mount on Kiev 24th of February last year. It did not work. So just don't go there. General, Ambassador, Grandmaster, great to see you all. Thank you very much. Great panel tonight. Constantine, thank you as well for joining me. Much appreciated. A lot going on in Russia. A lot going on in Ukraine. Going to be a fascinating few days and months to see how this all plays out.